Morning all. I'd like to show you another example on the theme of the Panov Botnik attack, which basically uh, illustrates isolated queen pawn type positions. Now here I want to show you Mikhail Tao against Shikovani played in Gori nineteen sixty eight. Mikhail Tao played c four and we transpose actually into uh, the Panov Botvinik position I had in my club over the board game uh, the other night recently. So this this can arise from the Karakhan uh, Panov Botvinik system by transposition. Bishop d3. So white has now this isolated queen's pawn. Black has the blockade on d5, and we see the move knight c6. So this gives uh, black options like knight b4 later. And white might be keen to play a3. It's it's more of a justification for at some point playing a3. We see both sides castling. Rook e1. Knight f6. In fact, rook e1 might even uh, potentially give the idea of a rook lift like this rather crudely. White has the isolated queen's pawn and needs to sort of play uh, dynamically against black's king side. Knight f6 secures e4 anyway, and now black might be free for knight b4 to d5, this classic blockade, but it's ruled out by a3. Now black plays b6, and we see bishop c2. The idea, it is it is rather crude it would seem to play queen d3, but what white is actually doing is weakening dark squares, and on the dark squares, if g6 is prompted, then these pieces are slightly looser, particularly the e7 bishop to this rook, which means that d5 later might be uh, having more effect to try and expose some loose pieces if nothing else. So it might not be about just mating black here, it's about the potential break with d5. Black now avoids the possibility of his king side being weakened. He plays bishop a6, well at least with queen d3 is ruled out. Bishop g5, now we see rook c8, and now queen d2. So the queen might be threatening just this transfer over like this, otherwise black might otherwise play be tempted to play at least knight a5 to c4. This c4 square in the c file looks to be very good for black, but in this current position, queen d2 has aggressive intent, and it's ruled out now by queen d6, guarding f4. We see now rook a d1, rook f d8, now the bishop drops back, and then we see queen b8, and here actually the reason why the bishops drop back is to create the battery again like this with queen c2, now threatening bishop takes f6 and queen h7. Crude, but very effective because it does generate this weakness now. Black's prompted to play g6. This means that these squares are a bit looser and the pieces on them are a bit looser, which means now after white's next move, bishop a2, white actually has a very key, very important threat here of playing potentially d5. Uh, because you can imagine e d, there's rook takes e7, knight takes, and then bishop takes. These pieces are looser on the dark squares, and this is one of the key things about this sort of isolated queen's pawn position. That okay, white has the structural damage, the isolated queen's pawn, but it's giving opportunities for great dynamism to create weaknesses around black's king and weaknesses on the dark squares here, which means d5, the liberating d5, not only gets rid of the isolated queen's pawn, it can actually win the game tactically rather quickly. Now here we see a really a, a panic reaction here from black. Black plays the move h6. Okay. So a very interesting move and setting up a kind of trap actually because bishop takes h6, knight g4, hits the bishop and now may be threatening things like knight takes d4 where the queen is eyeing h2 so it's a little bit of a trap being set for Mikhail Tao here. Does he really want to allow knight g4 which eyes h2 which is only defended by f3 which is defending d4? Well actually he counters uh, this tactical idea with a really crushing move now. I wonder if you can spot it if I give you 10 seconds starting from now. Okay, white plays bishop takes e6. 
the black king really has been neglected here. White is now threatening queen takes g6. This this looks very uh, bad to take. Black takes the bishop anyway, allowing queen takes g6 check. So we see king h8, check, king g8, and now knight takes g5, offering the bishop. Uh, but the, the king is hemmed in at the moment. And it's only the knight defending here. Okay, and in this position, black tries uh, the move. Well, if if takes, he he would get mated. If we just have a look at this check, this this is unfortunate for getting mated. <laughs> and if king f8, and then obviously queen f7. So he can't really take that bishop. He tries rook f8. And now we just see rook e4. This rook left is really quite devastating here to go to h4 to threaten queen h8. And here black resigned. A knockout. Move 23. But this sort of thing can happen in these isolated queen's pawn positions. So I think they're quite kind of instructive, especially if you have such a powerful dynamic player on the white side of the of the isolated queen's pawn position, like Mikhail Tal. This kind of devastation can can easily occur. Okay, I hope you got something out of this. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.